Welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video, and I wanted to talk about a game I just picked up for PlayStation VR. In fact, this is a new release, and I don't normally talk about new releases, because all well, everybody does, and I've got so many darn titles to play, I haven't really got around to buying any of the newer stuff. I'm still playing the stuff from like a year ago. But this game, this is Out of Ammo, this is pretty fun. It's got a heck of a steep learning curve to it. But it's really, really neat, and I thought I'd do a little review and also uh, talk about some of the pitfalls I ran into in uh, getting this thing working uh, finally. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit real-time strategy. You've got uh, your base here. Mine's getting decimated because this is well into this level I'm playing. But you've got bad guys coming in, and you got to set up your structures, and you got to put your little dudes down in all the different uh, defense lines and stuff, and just fight off waves and waves of bad guys. In fact, I've got a tank coming in, so this is not going to do very well for me. But, um, yeah, the actually, the reason I got this game... First of all, it looked really, really cool. Uh, I thought, and, and I'll, I'll talk about some of the neat features, in addition to just being a real-time strategy game, there's some really cool stuff in this. Let's get this helicopter to wipe out this tank here. Um, the, the cool thing is, in addition to doing this kind of from the sky uh, StarCraft almost type control scheme, you can actually take over the little guys on the ground and shoot the weapons. So that's really, really cool. I really like that. But it's got some snags. There's a few problems with it. Um, now, uh, a reason that I got this, and actually the, uh, the title of this video mentions pre-orders. I actually bought this game because if you pre-ordered it before last Tuesday, you actually got another game included with it for free. And it was only, I think in the States, this game pre-ordered with the extra game is $15. Here in Canada it was $20. But I thought, well, the reviews for the free game are pretty good. I like the look of this thing, so I think for the second time in my life, I'm going to do a pre-order. And I did. And overall, I'm pretty happy. I'm going to talk about pre-orders in a second, but uh, let, me, uh, let me briefly show you. The, the other game that it came with is called Castle Storm. So this is Castle Storm, and it's sort of a tower defense thing where you got waves of bad guys coming in. Uh, you may have noticed it's got Sir Gareth at the beginning, of which is uh, a character actually from the Zen Pinball game that I did a review of a little while ago. So it's kind of cute that uh, he's back. Um, Castle Storm's pretty good, so I figure for, for a free throw-in, hey, I might as well try it out. And as it turns out, I actually really like Out of Ammo. But, um, it's got its problems. Now, I'm just showing you another level that I did here. Uh, there's um, something like a dozen different layouts or places you can play, which is really good. And, uh, oh, here come the bad guys. So, I'm going to I'm gonna just try and destroy some of my troops right away here. I guess that's good. Here's that first-person perspective where you're actually down in the trenches. And you can actually shoot the waves of incoming bad guys, chuck grenades at them. Um, you'll notice my gun is literally out of ammo there. I'm going to talk about why that's a problem. Um, but let me just deploy a few more troops here. Get my guys doing their thing. Um, it's, it's the kind of game that you're best to actually play standing up. Um, first of all, being down here shooting all these bad guys is really handy to be able to move and dodge and stuff. But also, um, being able to deploy your troops properly on the map, you really want to be in a standing position. Now, let's just take these guys up. It is a lot of fun. It's very visceral when you're down here in the trenches. I really do like this. But I guess now is the time to really point out what's wrong with this. And it's particularly noticeable here with the sniper. You need the sniper rifle, and you need to be able to reload. And I can't. Okay, so here we are at the beginning of the game. You, uh, This is sort of the central hub where you can launch missions or play around with various settings. What I like about it is it's actually a shooting gallery. And I love shooting gallery games in VR. 
Okay, I'm going to grab the machine gun here. You can teleport around in this area. Try out the guns. Uh, you can't teleport on the main map, though. Like, when you're in those battles, that's strictly you're, you're rooted in place. But as you can see, I've run out of ammo on this machine gun, and it says just reach down to your hip and pull the trigger and put this uh, ammo clip in. I can't do it. So, to heck with the machine gun. Let me show you the um, sniper rifle. Now, I did finally get this working, but it took a lot of finagling. Uh, you can see it if, if I reach in a certain zone, and I'm hoping a future patch is actually going to fix this up, if you can just about grab a certain little bubble of space beside the weapon, it doesn't really matter if your hand is up or down or left or right, well, uh, rotated any old direction, but you eventually manage to... There you go. There. I just... There's the bullet. So the, the hand has to be exactly in that spot for the bullets to show up. Then you can put them in the sniper rifle and you get your single shot, which is very, very useful on the battlefield. But for my hand to have to be... See, if I move the gun a little bit, now the bullets don't load. And it's frustrating. I mean, that is going to be a major factor for how successful you're going to be with the sniper rifle. Back to the battlefield here. Yeah, these tall towers, you want to put snipers up there. Uh, luckily, the AI will shoot and thankfully will reload of its own accord. Not very well. The idea is, no, no, get into the field of battle. Uh, fight, fight the bad guys yourself as the soldiers. And I would if I could reload to save my life. Here, I'll, I'll take over this guy here. Unfortunately, he's a sniper with an empty rifle. So let's, uh, let's put that bullet in as the tank goes through and decimates my uh, camp. Where is that zone? Where do I have to put my hand to get the bullet? Come on, where is it? Where You see, it's like, this is really, really unusable. I'm, I'm hoping Zen Studios is going to fix this with a patch, because this is, this is impossible. But it's, uh, it's not all bad news. Again, there'll probably be a future patch that corrects the, uh, the reloading factor. But the way I play it right now is more I just do like a StarCraft real-time strategy. I mostly just move my troops around, get them in there. I will hop in long enough to shoot, and then when my gun runs out, I just hop back out and let the AI do the reloading. Um, here's an example of, of what's really cool, though. You can get into the bunker here, and you can fire this big, heavy machine gun, which is really awesome and a great kind of visceral feeling. Look at that! Down, you buggers! I love this! When the game is good, it's really, really good. And that reload thing is about the only major complaint I have. So much fun. Oh, now i got to reload this. Oh, and that one's dead anyway. Uh, oh, here's an example of um, another small complaint I have. Oh, wait a minute. Let's first of all, let's get rid of the tank here. Not quite enough. So let's get a helicopter to strike him. And by the way, in three in 3D with VR and stuff to watch these little vehicles going around destroying each other. Very cool. Very immersive. Now, I'm about to make a mistake, one of those ones I mentioned before. I'm going to grab my stockpile. This is where you do the um, resource management. I'm going to set this little horseshoe-shaped building out here. Now, that's actually the other complaint I have. Uh, you got to learn what each of these buildings do, because I was making a big mistake by putting that horseshoe-shaped building there. Uh, why? Well, it turns out that's actually just the home of the engineer, who kind of does all the general repairs. So by me putting that there, thinking it was going to be some kind of a fortification against the bad guys, that was a mistake. This square one, this is the one that I want to use. Oh, well, there we go. My desert game is over. Oh, well. All right, let's do the um, forest level, because this one's, this one's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I've uh, learned here, you can see I've got my base a bit, little bit better defended, and also all the important buildings like the engineer and the medic and stuff, keep them kind of central and protected in the middle, and all the turrets and the you know, sniper towers, they can all go on the outer edges, and maybe not quite so far away from each other. 
Um, you'll notice I do actually, the view kind of flips every once in a while. This game uses a uh, 90 degree turn, uh, quick turn feature. I'm hoping that's something else that they're going to patch out because um, it's a little disorienting and you very easily get lost. Oh, before I forget, see how these buildings have got like the wrench sign on top of them? I thought that meant, oh, they need to be repaired. No, that means that's where the engineer lives. So this is, again, part of the learning curve. These are the kind of things you need to find out as you're playing this game. But anyway, uh, yeah, you see this 90 degree turn thing. Um, what I would recommend for people who are going to be playing this game, do it standing up. But maybe have something nearby your leg to remind you where the furniture is, or at least where you are oriented to the, uh, the PlayStation. Maybe put a chair or some kind of a, a stool or something behind you. Because there were quite a few times I'm looking around the battlefield, I'm looking around with my gun, and then with, you know, if I need to turn my view, I'm hitting the 90 degree flip thing. And at certain points, my hands were jumping all over in front of me, and I couldn't pick up anything. And I was like, what's going on here? And then I realized when I kind of lifted up the visor, uh, you've got your back to the PlayStation. They can't see where your hands are right now. So what I decided was, okay, if I'm, if I'm going to... I should always be facing toward the PS4 as much as I can. It's not really doable in the midst of battle like this, but you try your best. And then use that 90 degree turning a lot. So if I, if I had a stool, or in my case a couch, just by the back of my leg, it was very handy for me to remind myself where I am in the room. So yes, uh, play this game standing up. Have yourself oriented in a way with some kind of a reference point so you will know where your camera is in your PlayStation 4. And pray they're going to patch out this uh, reload feature because other than those complaints and maybe the steep learning curve it's a lot of fun this game i mean it's a lot of the reviews that are out there are saying that there's no sense of progression to it uh you know you don't unlock more levels as you go it's just where do you want to fight in the desert in the canyons in the forest in the city choose whatever you want and have a battle personally i kind of like that but maybe if there's any future updates to this game they could not only fix the ammo thing, maybe they'll make a story mode or something like that. I, I hope so. And before I finish off, let me just uh, tell you my little story about pre-orders, uh, the title of this video. Um, I'm not normally in support or in favor of the pre-order kind of market. I know the video game industry has been that way for a while. I never ever use or go for pre-orders. Except for in this case, because I got Castle Storm for free. And as it turns out, this game is a lot of fun. Um, the only other time I've ever done that was for the original Battlefront 2. Not the one that just came out from EA that has so many people up in arms, but this one. I was such a huge fan of the Battlefront that came out in the early 2000s that uh, when the announcement was made for that sequel, the one I just showed you the screenshot for it, that was like, okay, I'm going to go against my normal rule and I'm actually going to place a pre-order with our version of GameStop, uh, Electronics Boutique. And I did, and I was very pleased. Now, I didn't end up playing Battlefront 2 from 2005 as often as the original Battlefront. Maybe that acted as a little bit of a warning to me when this newest Battlefront 2 was announced uh, last year. I thought, eh, having been maybe a little unimpressed the last time around, I think I'll take a... I'll just see what the reviews are like. And then the whole loot crate, loot crate thing happened, and yeah, that just wasn't going to go for it. So... Generally speaking, I don't do loot crates. Uh, sorry, I don't do pre-orders. But this game here, out of ammo, I thought I, I think because Castle Storm looks pretty good, and certainly I liked the uh, what the trailers were showing for this out of ammo game. And there's a lot of mini games in this as well, where you're trying to like defuse a bomb and hold off bad guys. I'm really looking forward to playing that when I can reload my gun. 
Uh, there's a lot of content in here, and it's it's fun. It's it's actually really good. I do recommend it, but I'm I'm hoping they patch some of this stuff up. All right. Well, anyway, I just thought I'd do my review of a new PlayStation VR game, and I hope you like it. And uh, I hope that they patch some of this stuff out so that more people will pick up this game because the middling reviews it's getting out there I don't think are very fair. All right. Well, until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.